Another thing people blame estradiol for is libido. Libido, oh my libido is low, I need to block my estrogen. Again, that's far more likely to make things worse than better. Uh, we know that men on TRT, a lot of what increases their sex drive is actually estradiol related, not lowering estradiol, but having it be higher actually. Well, Chris, um, I, of... I'm glad you brought up that point. Let me give you two examples. Just this week, just this week, we have to, there's only two drugs. We're going to ignore an aromatase inhibitor, but there's only two drugs that will raise testosterone levels and preserve fertility. And those are HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, and the selective estrogen receptor modulators. Now, I don't like the selective estrogen receptor modulators. I have to use them in men to regain their fertility. They've been on testosterone or want to use it to maintain fertility and not use testosterone. I don't like them. I prefer HCG. We'll talk about two things on that regard. But just this week, in two men that stopped their testosterone, they initiated HCG and, and enclomiphene. You can use clomid or enclomiphene. I would prefer enclomiphene. And both of them, within three weeks after starting, I'm getting a message back and a follow-up with them as that doc. And their testosterone levels are beautiful. Believe me, they're, they're, they look great, even not on testosterone, but on clomid and HCG, their testosterone levels are gorgeous. But they said, doc, yeah, I know my testosterone levels are good. And I, you know, I, I feel okay. Not as good as I did on testosterone, but Doc, I'm trying to get my wife pregnant, but I have zero interest in sex. I don't, I could care less. In fact, it's becoming such a problem that I, I just don't want to at all. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's from blocking estradiol centrally. That's the mechanism by the selective estrogen receptor modulators and libido is estrogen related. And exactly yeah. as you're saying, but I've had two examples just this week. And, uh, and to touch on HCG real quick for guys that are on that. Look, there's a, there's a ceiling to the testosterone levels you can get with HCG. I mean, it stimulates your, you know, your lady sales to produce testosterone. You can only stimulate them so much. So just for you guys, a, a, a lot of guys never realize that. But, you know, testosterone can raise levels as, as high as you want. But with HCG, it's a ceiling because you can only stimulate those latex cells so much to produce testosterone. That's just a that's just a little side note there. All right. But uh, but but keep going there, Chris, on on, on where we were at. As far as, you know, estradiol. yeah, so, so most side effects that people blame on estradiol have nothing to do with estradiol. We talked about acne, libido. How about water retention? That's one that's very common. You know, t water retention is a common side effect. Of, well, I don't know if I'd say common. It's it's common it, enough. Right? It's, 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 it's especially it's especially common in men that are insulin resistant when they start. Yeah. Don't have a good diet that they really can be common in those guys, middle aged and older men that already have a, you know, just don't have a good diet at all, especially one with a lot of sodium in it. it yeah, it's, I think, you know, water retention is really a multifactorial thing, which is what you just implied with what you said. And I agree with everything you just said. It's, it's a self-limited issue that can happen yeah. in men. Uh, there's a, maybe a transient increase in antidiuretic hormone when you first start, but mainly testosterone increases sodium absorption in the distal renal tubules. So men that have a lot of sodium in their diet, are going to retain that sodium and pull in that fluid. When that occurs, it works every time. If you give it time, and they will do just a couple of things. Number one, cut out all sodium intake, drink plenty of fluids, and try to get some aerobic exercise. And it goes away. It's it's self limited, and it does go away. Uh, for men that just refuse to cut out sodium, well, you know, I I used to would potentially give them a diuretic, but I don't anymore. I just say, look, if you don't clean up your diet, then I'm just going to lower your testosterone levels enough to where, you know, uh, you don't get the sodium, the fluid retention like you've got. And, uh, cause they need to clean up their diet. All right. Yeah. I mean, and they need to, but, but it is the testosterone increasing the sodium absorption. And once again, that is self-limited and you just, you can mitigate that by, by cutting out that sodium intake. And I don't know where this whole water estrogen water retention myth came from invariably probably bodybuilders, um, we, but we, along with what you said, we have no evidence that estradiol levels even correlate with edema at all. I mean, just none whatsoever. And there's no reason to think that it's the estradiols, all the things that you mentioned. Um, I could talk for hours about water retention because there's a lot of newer research, um, on, uh, the, what's called the endothelial glycocalyx which is the the mesh that lines your endothelium. And I think testosterone itself does have a shedding effect on, on that or can. And so I, I think that that's a, a direct effect of testosterone as well. The, the point is all these things that people blame estradiol for, it's, it's almost never the estradiol. <laughs> it's okay. usually 
other things. Right. And, the, and there, the people are going to argue with that, but it, but it is true. And, you know, we, we have studies in men that are not on forums and the internet and part of the bodybuilding world. Cause you know, men are going to say, well, I get all bloated and I'll take master dial and I, you know, I pee fluid. You look, it, it's not, it's not a diuretic. Yeah. You know, the big are not a diuretic. And, and the most importantly, when we take men that have no testosterone that are on ADT androgen deprivation therapy, we now give them estradiol to mitigate some of those severe effects they get from the loss of testosterone and estradiol. Once again, they lose that estradiol. We give that estradiol back to treat some of those devastating uh, symptoms that they get, and they don't get fluid retention. Yeah, they do not what get fluid retention. Giving them oral estradiol, raising their estradiol uh, to mitigate the effects of ADT, and they do not get fluid retention. When we give men estradiol that have severe dyslipidemia. Because that's how testosterone improves your lipid profile through estradiol. So we give oral estradiol to some men to improve their lipids that have severe dyslipidemia. They do not get fluid retention. They do not get sexual dysfunction. They do not get any other issues. Well, yeah. I mean, you can even take a more extreme example of men that are born with something called congenital aromatase deficiency. What happens to those men when you give them testosterone? Nothing. It doesn't help. They, they're, th these right. are men with very low sex drive, erectile dysfunction. The only thing that improves those things is estradiol. So it, it's not testosterone uh, in, in that, the most extreme example. But the androgen deprivation therapy examples are also really good. I think one of the other main things people blame estradiol for is so-called moodiness. or yes. um, I, It makes me emotional. I have a, I have huge problem with that. Um, maybe just philosophically, because the thing people don't understand, your hormones don't cause you to have certain feelings. <laughs> I mean, that's not how hormones work. Hormones provoke physiologic responses. Those physiologic responses can be transduced and interpreted in the brain in a variety of ways that, you know, can potentially make you feel a certain way. But strictly speaking, hormones don't make you feel a certain way. I mean, the best example I can give is adrenaline. Okay. Adrenaline makes your heart race. Okay. It makes your heart rate increase. Some people, when their heart rate increases, that makes them anxious. Some people that even gives them panic attacks, just the sensation of their heart racing. You probably have met patients like that. A lot of them are heavily, you know, they're what we call they do a lot of somatization, so they focus a lot on their internal sensations. But there's a whole other group of people. They get excited when they feel their heart race, right? Those are the people that jump out of airplanes, that ride roller coasters, do risky things. <laughs> you know, we, we, we even call them adrenaline junkies, right? So hormones and emotions and moods and stuff is a, is a very complex issue, but it's not accurate to say that when your estradiol level is high, low, normal, whatever, that that makes you moody, that that makes you cry at puppy videos or whatever. Well, uh, look, if your that, estradiol is too high for you, then your testosterone is too high for you. Exactly. That's the bottom line. The way you're going to lower estradiol is lower that dose and stay within that therapeutic window, which I'll be talking about in a presentation, but uh, you're dead on, uh, dead on. Look, if you have an estradiol problems, you're taking too much testosterone. For you, yep. but see, men want that testosterone. Why? Why do Why do they want? I mean, why do they just want to push the testosterone, bought the estradiol? Because men get caught in this trap, which I'll be talking about as well. They get caught up in the performance enhancement characteristics. I don't care what that you 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 see them every day of every week. You start it for symptoms of a deficiency. Many of them that I treat, I don't. You know, we don't. There's use, misuse, and abuse. I'm using I'm using it for medical use. All right, misuse is guys that are don't really need to be on it, but they're on it just because they think they should, and all their buddies are on it. And of course, we know what abuse is. That's the bodybuilding world using it purely for performance enhancement. But inevitably, what you see with most a lot of these men, you'll see it now on all the social media platforms, and is that they'll get on testosterone because they have symptoms of deficiency. We can't treat them if they don't, and but we can't tweeze out the performance enhancement characteristics from the benefits on their symptoms of a deficiency. In other words, no matter who takes it, man, woman, young or old, it's going to increase lean muscle mass, strength, endurance, exercise tolerance, decrease uh, healing time. It's going to increase bone mineral density. It's going to decrease uh, fat mass, especially a visceral body fat. It's going to do that in everyone in a dose response manner. So yes. whenever these guys overcome their symptoms of a deficiency, 
and they start feeling better. They start working out, start looking good. Well, then they kind of get that androgen creep and it all becomes about muscles, performance in the gym, taking pictures, putting <laughs> the shirts off now and, uh, and sex muscles and sex. Yeah. And that's what guys are promoting out there on social media. It's all about those muscles. That's not why you started it. You start it for true symptoms of a deficiency. You know, it's, it's about preventing age related disease and disability. And it depends about preventing frailty. Uh, and you know, luckily I don't have a large group of those men, but I see them, I see them still. And, uh, and they get, they just get caught up in that performance enhancement side. And they just want to take more than they actually need to improve that deficiency. And then they get into the trouble. Uh, and, you know, and we'll talk about that because all of us have a minimal effective concentration. Me, you, every man out there has a, just a level of testosterone that will resolve our symptoms of a deficiency. And that's yeah. the minimal effective concentration. Right. And then for some, there's a maximum tolerated dose. Okay. And so in between those two lines, we have the therapeutic window. That's where okay. we stayed when we were young. We we're always within that therapeutic window. There was a little di 